Hello, hello. I, uh, I'm quite excited about uh, a little uh, paper I just read and I wanted to discuss that briefly with you and share my excitement. So this is the little paper. It's about uh, ferrovolcanism and that means metal volcanism. And uh, this is supposed to be a phenomenon that can occur in small planets, planets in the making, when uh, there is metals segregating into the core. And the paper is based on a theoretical calculation. And it says that uh, when the core is solidifying, the metal core, then we might have a residual metal liquid. And this metal liquid might actually then start to be squeezed out of the core and it might migrate upwards into the mantle of such a small planet or a planet in the making. And if it's not too big a planet, it might even actually produce volcanism at the surface. And uh, here's a little image, let me share that with you. So here's a little image uh, from this article. So uh, this is an artist's impression of how this could work. We have a liquid in a core and uh, we have a core mantle boundary here in earth. This would be the D double prime layer. And uh, then we have a rocky mantle. This would be mainly olivine and pyroxene minerals like that. And uh, here, when we have this solidification moving into the core, then uh, we might actually have a residual liquid that's squeezed out. And it might, if the core, uh, if the mantle is not too thick, it might actually penetrate all the way through the mantle and produce metal magma, metal lavas, once it's at the surface. Now, can this be reasonable? Can this be true? Well, I was wondering about that and uh, we've just purchased a set of meteorites and I've got the same Chan meteorite here. It's a Russian meteorite from the very east of Russia. And in the 1960s, let me just check here, 1967, it was actually found and I've got a specimen here. And there was a second specimen found or a, a different variety was found in um, 2004. So the initial record was only metal meteorite fragments, but a little later, they actually found a palisite fragment. Palisite is a mixture between silicate minerals and metal. So let me show that to you. So here is the palisite of this particular meteorite. And it's a little hard to get this right because uh, it's polished. So it'll, it'll look very shiny and it's gonna reflect a lot. But let's see whether I get a good picture here. So here we have olive and grains and we have a metal uh, matrix. And uh, I uh, now it's better. So here we have the olive and greens, uh, grains and the metal matrix. And the olive is a little green, uh, yellowish green. And uh, here, the metal is intriguingly rather homogeneous. We don't see any major lamellae in there. And it seems to wrap around the olivine. It encapsulates the olivine. And uh, it's really enveloping all the olivine grains. And the olivines can be rather large. And some of them are a lot smaller. Let me just try to kind of point out to some of these. Here's a rather large one. And here's some tiny smaller fragments here. And uh, some of them look broken up while other parts look rather euhedral. So this was the younger facies that was only discovered in 2004. And this is a palisite, beautiful material. And I can turn this around. There you see the other side and it's also wonderfully polished. And uh, these are quite pricey specimens. And uh, as I said, it's rare in the sense that this was discovered in the far east of Russia. This was the mainland opposite the Kamchatka, Kamchatka Peninsula where this was found. And uh, here, this uh, is one of these palisites. And uh, according to this paper, these would result when there's metals segregating from a solidifying core of a small planet. But the intriguing thing is this specimen here, and that is the metal part of it. So here we have a bit of a metal uh, iron meteorite and it's got these uh, lamellae. This is camosite and tainite. These are the crystals that form when 
um, the metal alloy in the core of such a small planet is actually solidifying. So let me show that to you. So here we have these uh, lamellae and uh, they are iron nickel alloys, but, but we also have, and this is really intriguing, we have these rather bulbous and blobby areas here. And here's another one, and here's another one. And they actually don't have lamellae, these areas. So you can actually see them here. They're more drop-like or blob-like. They could have been fluid, actually. And uh, if I turn this around, you'll see the same features here. You see the wonderful Wiedmannstetten patterns defined by the Kamersite and Tainite lamellae. And then we have these irregular areas. Here's again, almost a trail of this irregular material. And uh, this seems to have migrated through this sample. And uh, this is uh, rather intriguing. So I'll turn it around again. And uh, this is intriguing because it would actually provide at least uh, some sort of hands-on evidence that this process from this article could be real, that there is a migrating metal phase, a metal liquid that might be percolating through the already partly solidified the lamellae material in such a situation. So I'll bring you back to the, um, to the uh, diagram here. So this is the diagram, and uh, we would be looking at material just from that part of such a small planet, the metal part, which is here, with a bit of blobby material and solidified material, and then we would see also some fragments of material coming just from that. So luckily, this material from the same Chan meteorite would have caught just about this area. So we actually have access to what uh, is the area between the core and the mantle of such a small planet. Now, this is um, <clears throat> a review paper on mantle plumes, um, or on terrestrial mantle plumes. And here, of course, the mantle is a lot thicker. This is 2,900 kilometers. And here we believe that these plumes rise up and they would feed hotspots like this one here. So this would be Hawaii or La Palma. And La Palma has in the Canary Islands has just been erupting, Hawaii also. And uh, this is material that we believe is fed from these areas down at the core mantle boundary. There's no way for us to go down there. This is so deep. I mean, we cannot drill that deep. Uh, our deepest drill hole is about 12 kilometers. So um, this is completely out of reach, but the meteorite samples I've just shown, they give us a representation of what it could be uh, down there, how it could look down there, that there is a transition between a metal core and a silicate mantle, and that there is mixing between these two environments, at least to a certain degree, that there is some irregularities between them that could lead to even some blobs of material rising up. And uh, this is uh, what uh, I think we have been looking at, some material from the core mantle boundary of a small planet. And uh, this makes this uh, paper so intriguing, and it seems to fit with this rather peculiar palisite iron meteorite sequence that we have from Eastern Russia. And uh, I'm quite thrilled by it. So seeing a theoretical calculation and a, a, a meteorite suite that would actually be confirming that, or at least be consistent with that, I think it's quite exciting. So I wanted to share my excitement with you. Thank you very much for your attention, and I hope you enjoyed that. All the very best. Bye-bye.